Uh, greetings everybody uh, Today is the 18th of February and it's just before 9 o'clock in the evening uh, This will be part 2 of yesterday's video that I did uh, called Daniel's 70 weeks the correct interpretation uh, part 1 so in part 1 we, we looked at Daniel's 70 weeks in terms of uh, the 70 weeks of years, 490 years. Okay, what we And that was the interpretation of Daniel's uh, uh, prophecy for the was flowing into the, the is, uh, for, the, for Jesus' first coming, for his first advent. And I mentioned in, in yesterday's video that there, is a, that there is an interpretation for Daniel's 70 weeks that applies to the end times the time that we're living in right now leading into the the last days and that's what the focus of this video is all about so i'm not going to recap on this entire video please watch it uh, i would suggest you watch it before if you haven't already watched that video and you've and you've just started on this video i would i'd recommend that you start on that video first because it does form the foundation we covered a lot of things in terms of when the correct trigger was, what the correct trigger was for the for the uh, for the count of uh, 490 years. We looked at when that was in relation to the true biblical chronology. Uh, we looked at the uh, how that related to the uh, when Jesus was was baptized and alt and 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 crucified, and we also looked at how the the seventh the the seventy weeks for thy people versus the seventy weeks for thy holy city uh, are two separate counts within the same prophecy, and we showed how the real reason what the real reason was for the uh, second temple having been destroyed in seventy eighty uh, in relation to that count and using the true uh, biblical chronology. As an anchor to interpret Daniel's 70 weeks so I do believe that we've now in that uh, that would have been the 70 weeks of years that the that the wise men from the East would have used uh, to determine the birth year for Messiah they understood the prophecy they also at that time understood exactly what the trigger was they understood and they still had record of when the trigger took place so they were able to determine uh, 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 by counts of years exactly when messiah should be born they also observed the the second witness uh, the sun the the signs in the in the in the stars and they together they were able to pinpoint and understand exactly which year Jesus was was born and I've demonstrated that we can also in this day we can able we're able to to understand that clearly that Jesus was born in 2 BC so the same information that they had available to to them at the time we've got available to us and but the only difference is this time around we're going to use Daniel's prophecy to understand the coming of the Lord at, in, at the in the last days in the time of the end so as it was a uh, an extremely important prophecy for for the the the, the watch watchmen uh, looking for the coming of the Messiah uh, two thousand years ago. So it is also a very very important prophecy for the watchmen of today to understand the coming of Messiah in the end times. And this part two is going to be looking at that that aspect of it. Okay, so uh, I've made a similar chart. To last time, uh, except that this time it's now done uh, in terms of 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 seventy Shabuah. Now there's one Shabuah per year, so a Shabuah is also feast of weeks. Um, perhaps I should just go to the scripture and prove that uh, to you. Let's just go and have a look at the. Gonna do a search here for Shabur, uh, the word weeks. Well, let's just have a look at it here. Uh, Daniel, uh, I was looking at it a bit earlier. Uh, 9 24. Okay, 70 weeks. So we see that word weeks is uh, H7. Uh, 620 which is Shabuah okay uh, so if we just if we I just want to show you 
that this is also Feast of Weeks. Okay. Um, so if we, we're just searching for that H620 with Shabuah, okay, then we come up with these are the places that it occurs in 16 verses and 19 matches. Okay. Uh, using this is a program uh, called eSword. And uh, so it's very powerful for doing electronic searches and things like that. So uh, I'm going to go from there because there's a couple of interesting things uh, for those that are that are following this that are from from Ministry Revealed will understand uh, Daniel's uh, the 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 importance and the meaning uh, the shadow type of Daniel, of Jacob's uh, working for Laban for his wives for uh, for Leah and and Rachel and in this this is uh, Genesis uh, 29 7 we see that fulfill her week and we'll, uh, this was when Laban said to, to Jacob, uh, Jacob accused him of, of beguiling him, for tricking him, giving him the wrong daughter. He, he worked for Rachel and then he got Leah and he discovered that after the consummation of the, of the marriage. Uh, and uh, Laban said to him, fulfill her week. So he actually said to her, fulfill her Shabua. Fulfill her Shabua. Very interesting that we just need to take note of it. It wasn't just any any set of seven uh, days. It was specifically a, a, a Shabua. It was a Feast of Weeks <laughs> uh, type of situation. So we need to take note of that. Um, and, he, and he did that, uh, verse 28. But then if we go down um, Exodus 34, and it says, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. So the Feast of Weeks, okay, is... The Feast of Shabua, okay, so the Feast of Weeks, yeah, we said um, uh, there was in Numbers 28, it said, it said also in the day of the first fruits, when thou bring thy new meat offering to the Lord, after your weeks, your Shabua, uh, then ye shall have a holy convocation, and ye shall do no civil work, so it's a, the Feast of Weeks is the Feast of Shabua. Um, there's an one, I'll do one more place, and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks, the feast of Shabuah, unto the Lord thy God, with, with the tribute of a freewill offering of the hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according to the Lord. So there was, so we can see clearly, I'll do one last one, we, uh, this is Deuteronomy 16, uh, three times in a year, thou shalt, uh, thou shalt, uh, shall thy males appear before the Lord thy God in a place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Shabua, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So those were the three pilgrim feasts. And it's the Feast of Weeks, which is the Feast of Shabua. Okay, so there's only one three times a year. Uh, it said there was Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and Tabernacles. So the Feast of Weeks occurs once per year. The Feast of Shabua is a, is a, is a specific... It was one of the whole, uh, important pilgrim feasts that they, they had to attend at least, uh, that they had to attend every year together with the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Tabernacles. So there's no doubt that when Daniel said, 70 Shabuah are determined for thy people, we can clearly, without with a clear conscience, interpret it as 70 years. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Okay, so that's very important. This is not twisting the scriptures. This is understanding that a particular word can mean more than one thing. We're going to see a number of those instances in, in Daniel's 70 weeks as we, as we look at it um, from a 70, we, uh, 70 years perspective for the, for the time of the end. Okay, so let me just expand this again. Okay, once again, I apologize. Anybody who's watching this video on a, on a cell phone screen, I highly recommend that you watch the video on a large screen if you can. Uh, it makes it a lot easier on the smaller text. I'm trying to get a, a fair amount of information on one screen and uh, so that the size of it can be a, l a little bit of a problem if, you, if you're on a small screen. All right, so this is the Daniel 70 week chart, uh, 70 Shabua or 70 feast a week chart and it's and I want to show you now how we interpret this prophecy the same prophecy uh, from an end day, end of time end of days uh, time of the end perspective okay I think I'm gonna go to 
I used, uh, I, I'm doing a weekly uh, class with a, with a small cell group. And this video is also for them. So I'm, I'm just going to use the notes that I, um, that I prepared for them. Uh, for those classes because I, I, it'll just facilitate this video as well okay so this is the, the these are the, the we're looking at the same text the same uh, uh, chapters and verses for Daniel's 70 week prophecy we're going to look at it in terms of the uh, of the is flowing into the is to come okay so uh, okay, you'll get an understanding what I'm what I'm saying. So with the, the prophecy in terms of the end times. So it goes on to say, right, Daniel 9:24 says, uh, 70 weeks, or 70 Shabuah, which or 70 feast of weeks. Okay, 70 harvests, in other words, are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. So there's two sets of 70 years. Okay. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, uh, to make uh, reconciliation for iniquity and to bring everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Okay, so those are the things that would be achieved uh, okay, in the fulfilling of this prophecy. Those were the things, the, the, uh, to finish transgression, to make end of sins, that's two, to make reconciliation for iniquity or lawlessness, that's three, to bring everlasting righteousness, that clearly has not happened yet, and to seal up the vision, which is also, and prophecy, end of prophecy and vision has not happened yet, and to anoint the Most Holy, that is the final anointing. So three of them have partially been fulfilled. This is a prophecy that has not been entirely fulfilled. And the Lord doesn't put a prophecy in and not fulfill it in its entirety, which means that we are fully entitled to look at this prophecy as incomplete and still applicable to our time and it's not something of the for the for the past okay because the, the the things that we needed to, that would be achieved uh, by this prophecy or, or that this this prophecy was prophesying these things to be complete and they haven't all been completed which means it is still a fulfillment of this prophecy and the fulfillment of this prophecy in terms of the 70 shubur for the end times okay so then, then Daniel goes on to say, know, know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and, and build Jerusalem, which was the trigger. Okay? There's a command to restore and, and, and build Jerusalem. Now, right now, Jerusalem is kind of intact. This means that for this to apply for the end times, it means that something has to happen to Jerusalem that would validate issuing another command to restore it and build it. Okay? So there's another trigger coming. Uh, and, and then that's uh, the trigger unto the uh, Messiah, the Prince. And then he goes on to, and, and it's, uh, so from the trigger, it will then be seven weeks, or seven feasts of weeks, and three score, which is actually multiple six. The word Hebrew word is multiple six. Okay, so multiple in this instance, in normally when in the multiple six, the multiple factor is ten. In every translation, multiple six is translated as 60. But I believe that in the instance of this end time understanding, that this multiple six is to be interpreted as the multiple is one as opposed to ten, which leaves this as a six. So it would be six feast a weeks plus another six of feast a weeks and two weeks and two Shabuah. So it's seven Shabuah and six Shabuah and two, two Shabuah. And the streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times okay we'll see that on the chart as well so those that's going to occur during that time period seven six and two totaling 15 okay i just put a note in here that from the trigger unto the messiah is seven harvest years okay and uh, the reason why i used harvest years here is i'm trying to uh we must remember that this this shabua uh we need when we're looking at this thing from the end times we're not looking at from the first month to the 12th month so from the beginning of the year to be looking at the the agricultural cycle we're looking at the shemitah cycle and the agricultural cycle runs from the seventh month to the seventh month or from autumn to autumn so that's a harvest year and a harvest so harvest year crosses over from one 
year, partly in one year and partly in the other year. The harvest, from a northern hemisphere perspective, would, would come to an end at, at uh, tabernacles, and that's uh, going into at the autumn, and go, then then the winter comes in, and then so, the winter sowing happens. Uh, there's a period of waiting until spring comes, and then there's the harvesting starts, uh, harvesting of barley, and then the harvesting of the winter wheat, and then the harvesting of this spring wheat going into harvesting of grapes and olives etc so the harvest cycle goes from autumn to autumn so that's why i've called these and when we're looking at these end times we must understand that this is now we, we're looking at a year that doesn't start on i don't like using the name uh, nissan one okay we in the first month we're not looking at the first month or as the jews call it nissan we're looking at from the seventh month Okay, for the harvest cycle, the harvest cycle goes from the seventh month to the seventh month. Okay, so, so the so from the trigger until Messiah is seven harvest years, uh, which will be the, the tribulation years for the seals, and the trigger occurring during the harvest before the tribulation. Okay. So just continuing on, in Daniel nine twenty six. Um, and so and after three score and two weeks or after a multiple six and two weeks shall messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary that that we will see is satan that uh, comes and he sits in the temple as god okay and and the end thereof shall be with the flood and unto and unto the end of the war desolations are determined we need to take note of yeah this word after is the Hebrew word H310, which can also mean the hinder part, or the hind, or the latter part, or towards the end of. Okay, it's not necessarily after, as in it after, but towards the end of a period of time. So, I I believe that for the end time understanding that we're looking at here is, uh, and towards the hind part, or towards the latter part of the six and two. Okay, the three score and two. Or the, the multiple six and two. So towards the latter part of that shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the prince shall come now and, and destroy the city. Now re, you will recall that we had we had Jesus was was crucified on the cross. He was cut off um, in the midst of of, of of a seven week. This was mentioning it, but now we've got another cut off. Okay. And then in the next verse it continues and it says, And he shall confirm a covenant with many for, for one week, okay, or, or in a certain week, or in a certain, at a certain feast of weeks. And in the midst of that week, or in the midst of that feast, he, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of, of, of abomination, you shall make it desolate even unto the consummation or full end. Or annihilation can also mean this H three six one seven, and that and be the, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Okay, so it's talking about the final, the for, because of the other spirit of abominations uh, on this holy city, um, he shall make it desolate, even until the full end, and that determined shall be poured. And that's this is referring to the seven bowls that be poured out right at the end. So after all, at, right at the end of this of this picture of the seven, six, and two, you make a, you will confirm a covenant with many. Okay, you will confirm a covenant with with many, and you shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So what we're seeing here in this previous verse that I need to do is, is that the, is the cutting off of the Messiah, and what I didn't put in these notes is this this word cut off. This must this Messiah, Messiah shall be cut off. Is is the word is H three seven seven two, which is well. Let's just go and have a look at at that Messiah um, cut off, just so that you understand that that is a that that's a covenant cut off. It's a blood covenant cut cut off, um, and it's um, it's cut off. It's H three seven seven two. Let's let's call that up. So that's um, Karath. Okay, it's a primitive root word to cut off uh, down to Sunday by implication to destroy or consume specifically uh, to covenant to, to uh, specifically to covenant that is to make an alliance or a bargain or 
orig originally by cutting the flesh. So this was a blood covenant. This this cutting off is referring to a blood covenant, um, and uh, uh, and passing between the pieces. So you re recall that's how the Lord God made a blood covenant with Abraham, the passing through the pieces. So that's this is this is not just a cut off that we see. Uh, it's, 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 there's another cut off in Psalm 1910. Uh, if we just go to Psalm 1910, which is also related to this end time understanding, 90 verse 10. Um, Psalm 90, 10. Uh, okay, and in the days of our years are th 70, uh, and if by reason of strength they be 80 years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. Now, this cut off is a different cut off. This is H 1468. Um, and it means uh, to shear off, uh, so in a sense of passing rapidly, okay, or bringing. Um, so it's a it's a whole different. It's a passing off. It's a passing away. It's a passing rapidly concept. It's not a blood covenant, okay. And we know that this event relates to uh, ten years and a bit, okay, because it's. 80 years, it's 70 uh, to 80 with strength, uh, which is 10 years, and soon, which is a little bit more, so it's 10 and a bit. Now, so seven years, uh, this relates to the seven years of seals plus 10 and a bit to the cut off before flying away. All of this is, is related to the fly away in Revelation 12, where the woman it flies away on the wings of an eagle to a place prepared and she's nourished there for a, for a time, times. And half a time, three and a half years. Okay, and there's a cutting off here, but this is not a blood covenant cut off. So this happens into it, a three and a half, uh, uh, three and a half years into trumpets, about three and a half years into trumpets, but it's not a cut off, as in covenant cut off. Okay, whereas in Daniel's uh, uh, cut off, we're seeing that it's a, a covenant uh, cut off. And after uh, six and two weeks, or, or, or towards the hind part of six and two weeks, shall shall, shall a Messiah be cut off, the H3772, which is a covenant cut off. And this, so this is towards the hind part of the six and two. Okay, so if we go to our chart, um, let's just go th have a look there in the chart here so we've got okay let's just go through what we've read now to date all right we've what what daniel said we we had 70 shabua and and then he said understand that from the commandment to restore shall be uh, uh seven seven weeks or seven seven years um multiple six and two so it's seven six and two so after, uh, towards uh, uh, that, uh, going, from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem shall be seven, six, and two. Okay, so we see here, so 70, 70 Shabuah, and then after a commandment, there will be seven, six, and two. Now, in, in the previous uh, interpretation, we understood that it was seven, sixty, and two, which is 69, which is clearly part of the 70 weeks with one right at the end but in the end times understanding it's it's seven six and two which is a total of 15 this cannot be part of the 70 this is now after the 70 okay so after the 70 these things happen whereas in the first time around th these this description was part of the 70 you, if you read it in, in that context, you'll see it. There's no, there's no uh, contradiction there. There's no error. It's, it's 70 weeks are determined, and know therefore and understand from the command. So the, we wait for the, from the trigger. It'll be seven, six, and two. Okay. So we understand from other places that there will be a destruction. There will be an attack on Jerusalem, and from that attack will probably result in a command to rebuild and from that command to rebuild will be 
the 7, 6 and 2. 7, 6 and 2, which is a total of 15. So, so the difference between the, the uh, Daniel 70 weeks in, in the wars is that the trigger, the trigger event was at the beginning of the 72 weeks. But in the Daniel's prophecy, in the interpretation of the is to come, the trigger will be at the end of the 72 weeks. And that's, so he didn't tell us when, he doesn't st define when the trigger will be. We, know, we, we, we just have to wait for the trigger. And in the case of the, the wars, the trigger came right at the beginning. But in the, in the, in the case of the is to come, the trigger is going to come at the end of the 70. And that makes the difference as to why this portion, the 7, 6 and 2, comes after the 70, because the trigger comes at the end of the 70, but in the 7, 60 and 2 comes part of the 70, because the trigger was at the beginning of the 70. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's what we're seeing there. Then it goes on to say that towards the latter part, towards the hind part of the 6 and 2, towards the hind part of the, there will be a cutting off, which is a blood covenant cut off. It's, it's the same type of uh, uh, blood covenant that the Lord did at his crucifixion in, the, in, in, uh, in 33 AD, which was, which was predicted in the middle of the final week. In the middle of the final seven, he was cut off. At, uh, so he was baptized in, in 29 uh, AD. He began his first year of ministry was 30 AD, and he was cut off. He was he entered into a blood covenant in the midst of that week in 33 AD at Passover, which is exactly halfway, midway through that final week. But this instance now we're saying it's towards, it's not after, but it's towards the latter end of the 6 and 2, which would put us somewhere. I mean, it does, it, it's, it can be anywhere. In the, from halfway to this side, okay, that would be the the latter end. To, to, to the it doesn't give us an exact year. Now we we know that um, from other scriptures that the witnesses are cut are, are killed somewhere in the in the region of um, uh, thirteen years into into the tribulation or or six years into into trumpets. So at the end of six years, we know that the witnesses are killed. And um, so we know that there's a there's an event happening here, and Daniel's uh, uh, prophecy is alluding to that same event towards the latter part of the six and two. Okay, I hope I hope that makes um, sense to you. Now, what about the seventy Shabuah for thy people? Well, that's what we've seen. You know, we've we, we've seen that the seventy years for Israel. There was for many years people uh, understood that Israel had seventy years. Uh, allocated to him, but now they're already 75 years going almost 76 years in the land and we've lost sight well most of the people have lost sight of that 70 years and but it's still there and now this is where i want to show you that the 70 years that were determined for thy people in daniel 70 weeks is still relevant and it's still applicable and it's uh, for for this end time understanding because it gives us the 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 starting point of this remainder of the seven six and two so the question is, how is it possible that seven Shabuah are determined for thy people and they are already more than 70 years in the land? Well, it goes back to understanding the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord said in Leviticus 19.23, he said, uh, when you come into the land and you plant all manner of trees, okay, the fruit thereof is uncircumcised to you for three years, and in the fourth year it's mine, it's holy unto me, and in the fifth year it's yours. Let's just go and have a look at that. Leviticus uh, 19.23 Just so that we needed to understand um, uh, this, this was this, when you come into the land part because when, uh, and we, it was applicable when they came into the land again in these modern times. So here it is here. Leviticus 19.23 I'm just going to uh, because some people struggle with all the numbers. I'm just going to switch it to the, uh, the version of King James without all the numbers. And it says, When you shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years it shall be uncircumcised unto you, and it shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to, to praise the Lord with all. 
and in the fifth year you shall eat of the fruit. So there was, the, they could not have of the fruit for the first four years, it wasn't theirs. Okay? And the Lord, being a just God, did, did not count those years. They came into the land, but it was like a gestation period, it was like a, 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 an ascension period of these years. So they came into the land in 48. They formed their government. They only really had a king in the land in, 19, in, in 48. It took them a while. There was a provisional government in place from day one in May 13 or 14 in 1948. And there was a provisional government in place. But it wasn't until the following year that they voted a, a government in. So now they've got a king and now the, the, the clock starts. In that same year, there was a whole event and they planted all manner of trees. So that's, that's a lead up to these things. And then the fruit that came of those trees was not for them for the first three years. Only in the fourth year, okay, was it the Lord's. So that's what the law says with regards to the, the fruit from intent. So the Lord didn't count these. And so the year one for the 70 was only in 1954. was year one for the 70. So we know that they are only in their 70th year now. They're only coming, they've only come to the end of their 70 now. And what happens at the end of the 70 is it must come to an end. They can't go into 71, otherwise scripture is broken. They cannot, they will not see the 70, they will not see the completion of the 71st year. So sometime between the 70 and before they turn 71 in, 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 in the way God counts, in the, in the, not the way man counts, but in the way God counts, they, 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 they must be out of the land. Why? Because the land hasn't been rested. And this is something that they, that they didn't do the first time around. They were exiled, uh, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and all the, the people from, uh, from the first time round of the 70 years of exile was because they didn't rest the land. And they needed, and it needed to rest. For, for, so we saw that in... Um, Two Chronicles um, 36. Um, so it, it was this was where they were carried and and, uh, and then they had escaped from the sword carried away by, uh, to Babylon, where, where they were servants to him and and his sons until the reign of Persia. That was so they were servants to Nebuchadnezzar until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Uh, and that was for, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as long as they, she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath for, uh, to fulfill 70 years. So this was, they didn't, they weren't observing the Sabbath year, year rest uh, uh, for 490 years or so uh, prior to the 70 years of exile. And so they owed the Lord 70 years and the land had to rest for these 70 years and then and in that time there were, could be no temple there so the temple had to be destroyed and the temple wasn't in, in place on that land for 70 years and now we've come to the modern modern times understanding uh, we, we've, we've got a repeat of the situation they've been in the land and since they've got Jerusalem they haven't uh, they were supposed to let rest the land every seven years and if you count the number of uh, uh, rest periods within, in, within the cycle from when they received Jerusalem in, in, in 1967, you will find that there, from, from, from then till this year, they've, there were seven uh, Sabbaths, seven Sabbath years. This year is the eighth the eighth Sabbath year. Well, the eighth Sabbath year, eighth, eighth Sabbath year would have started at four in uh, in 2023. So we're right in it at the moment. Uh, I have a feeling that they're not going to get to to do much agriculture uh, in this year. This is going to be a forced uh, rest year, the way I see things at the moment. But seven of them have already passed, at which they didn't rest the land, and they owe the Lord seven years. And it's for that reason that the land must rest seven years. And during the time of seals, the land will rest. And they will not be in the land, and uh, as they were not in the land in the time when they were exiled into Babylon. This time they'll be out of the land and exiled into multiple nations, or those that survive. 
uh, it's going to be very traumatic for them. If you if you want to go and read, have a good, pretty good understanding of, of what's going to happen, you can go and have a look at what happened the first time around. In Ezekiel chapters uh, 4, 5 and 6, you'll get a pretty good idea of what's coming for the, for the land of Israel. Um, so, so the land has to rest for the seven years before the Lord brings them back in again. And that will be the Ezekiel 38, 39, Ezekiel 39 war where he brings, he deals with the enemies of his people. And he brings them back into the land and then they start building the temple, which is of course described in detail in Ezekiel chapter 40 onward. So they, that temple building will happen over there after the land is rested. Just while I'm on the subject, you will recall that I said to you that we were, there was 70 years applicable to thy people, and there's also the 70 years uh, that have been determined for the people and the holy city. So just like it was in the wars, there was a 490 years applicable to the people, and to uh, uh, for for the that that dealt with the time to the coming of the Messiah, his baptism and his crucifixion, and we saw that there was a 490 years. Uh, applied to the the city where from the time that it was completed 34 years into the cycle up until the year 70 AD there was a 490 year count for the city well in this exactly the same way there's a 70 year 70 Shabur count for the city now they got the city in 60 uh, in 67 1967 so from 68 onwards we will count we can count seven seven Shabur uh, and that will bring us to the end of the 14th year is exactly 70 Shabur, 70 years so there's a count for the city in built into the the is to come understanding of this prophecy so that's we see that the gap between from when the Lord started counting in 1954 from year one to to the year uh, 67 well, well 1968 would have been year one so there's a 14 year gap okay there's a 14 year gap to the start of the count up to 67 inc so from 54 including 54 up to 67 is 14 years and we see that there's a 40 year tribulation which is of course the the other side of the gap so there's a delay in the starting of the 70 the count of 70 by 14 years but when the 70 comes to an end for the people, the 70 continues for another 14 years for the city of Jerusalem. Okay? So I'll just I'll go through it again. The 70 started in, uh, in the first year in 1954, and it comes to an end now. And because Jerusalem's count started 14 years later, the Jerusalem count must continue for another 14 years. And there we have that uh, tying up perfectly into the 14 year understanding of the tribulation which Daniel is confirming here for us. Although Daniel is giving us a full, uh, a full picture of 15 years, but the 15th year is the Jubilee. So it's 14 years tribulation and the 15th year uh, Jubilee. So, by the way, this 1954 would have been year one of the seven-year cycle. And we know that uh, that is the case because we know exactly where the, the Jubilee is. In the last video, I showed you that the Lord Jesus... Uh, uh, um, the, the, the Lord um, proclaimed the Jubilee in, in the fall of 29 AD so the fall of 29 means that 29 stroke 30 AD was a Jubilee year so we can from there we can go forward in Jubilee cycles of 49 years and we can determine exactly where where we are in the Shemitah cycle and this is something that has been lost that the, that the Jews have lost sight of Everybody's lost sight of, and we, the Lord Jesus set the matter straight in uh, Luke 4. I showed it in the last video. In Luke 4, he, de he, he proclaimed the Jubilee year, and we know exactly which year he proclaimed it in, in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. And we know that that was the, in, in, uh, in the 15th, in, in the 29 AD, that towards the latter part of 29 AD. He was still in his, up to August 19 of 29 AD, he was still in his 15th year of his reign so we we can peg it very accurately and then of course we've got the biblical uh, chronology by the way uh, as i said in the last video the, you cannot just break these cycles this is a cycle that's been in place as i believe that goes for, as far back as from the first year that they entered into the promised land 
I'll just show that to you because it's such an interesting thing. If we go to the biblical chronology, I, this was in, I showed you in the last video, and we know that Jesus declared the um, the jubilee. He declared this jubilee in 29 AD, the same year that he was baptized. Okay, so from here we are able to take jubilee counts forward, and we can also take jubilee counts backwards. And if with the, using the biblical chronology, which we know is the true uh, count of the years, we can now determine. And, and the interesting that I, I that I found is when you when you took it all the way back to the year that they entered into the promised land. Uh, let's just see if I can find it. Yeah, the year that Joshua took them into the promised land. This was death of Moses. They went into the promised land in that year. So they entered in right at the very, very beginning. Right, uh, sorry, just at the end of this first year of, of, of the Jubilee cycle. There's the, there's the end of the Jubilee cycle. This is the beginning. So they, this all happened in a Jubilee year. Um, so this is going back without any form of manipulation at all. Uh, just c counting back, taking back the counts through the years. We see that the, the, that the entry into the Promised Land actually occurred uh, in the, at the beginning of a Jubilee cycle. Just, I just thought that would be that's, that's something interesting. And then of course the opposite is also true. We can take the count forward. Um, to our time where we are now and we know that the next jubilee uh, will be in the year uh, t well starts in 38 39 in this and in this it'll be the Gregorian date 38 39 in the fall of 38 will be the start of the jubilee most of it will fall into the year 2039 that will be the actual jubilee and this is based on what the lord declared to be a jubilee year in the year that he was baptized 29 AD so we know exactly where we are in the Shemitah cycle. And so this cycle has been running. I don't think it went before. It's possible that the cycle of seven year cycles and the Jubilees ran from before they went into the Promised Land. But when I took it back further, I must admit that it started becoming less and less meaningful in terms of events. Uh, after the, the incident of the Promised Land, there were many, many, many events. And that's a separate, I have covered it in a previous video. There were many events that fell on the seventh year or on the first year of a particular cycle. So I'm fairly confident that the cycle, I believe that the cycle started in when they went to the Promised Land the first time around. And it's been running without uh, any, any breaks since then. And that's another reason why you just cannot take the one week uh, this this the the seventieth uh, of that of Daniel's seventy year and just move it out by two thousand years because this cycle that would be breaking the cycle that's been running and the Lord doesn't do it that do it that way he he's, his cycle is running and he and the events will still fall within these cycles uh, I've got another ch uh, chart that actually shows it very clearly um, it's very similar to the one that Alan uses um, slight slightly different. I have covered this in great detail in in this video here. Uh, let me just show you. There's a video here that I show that I did uh, where we are in the Jubilee cycle biblical proof. I go into great detail on that in that video. But just to to, to just to recap very briefly for this purposes, we we've got us we know that from. Mm, Uh, from 29 AD, 29th, um, 2930, um, that was the, uh, so the Jubilee year, this is where the Jubilee year would be, in the year 30, it, it starts, well it started, you see these numbers, I've got it, yeah, it actually started in 29, but it flowed over into the year 30, okay. And if we take this count of the count of jubilees, we can we can see that the jubilee, the next jubilee, will be 38, 39. That will be the next jubilee, starting in 38 and flowing over into 39. 
2038. 2038 to 2039. So we know exactly where we are, and we know that this year, where we are right now, this is where we are right now. We're still in the 23, 24 year. We haven't finished. We haven't gone over into the next, into the next uh, year. That'll happen in April. Uh, I believe April 8 will be this, the changeover from the current year, and then it'll be 24, uh, 25. But we're still in the seventh year right now, and it's going into it'll be seventh year up until fall, up until the fall of 24. It'll be in the seventh year of the Jubilee cycle or of the Shemitah cycle, and we've got two sets. We've, we're 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 at the end of the third set of uh, of seven seven Shemitahs. So there's two remaining, which is the two remaining sets of seven for the seals and trumpets in times. Okay, so just that was just a bit of a, a recap. Um, in terms of those 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 jubilee counts so getting back to daniel's prophecy um, daniel's prophecy was 70 years and then know and understand that from the tr from the trigger will be seven six and two now for some other reason daniel grouped these two the 14th year and the 15th year together we know that the 14th is a cleanup year so the lord returns at at the beginning of the 14th he deals with his enemies in this time and then we've got the jubilee year so he deals with his enemies and then we got the jubilee year, which is the restoration of the land in 38 20 38 39 and then continues on into the millennial reign so for some other reason i'm not sure why but uh daniel grouped these two years so we've got a seven for seals a six of the trumpets and the seventh trumpet is, is grouped together with the jubilee year. the lord is dealing with enemies and then he's dealing handing back the land on, on the other end okay uh, within this within this whole thing we know just I, I mentioned that we've got a return here but we've got a rapture that happens at the end of seals and we've got an escape group that happens at the beginning of this of this uh, whole process now these this escape rapture and return is not in the Daniel prophecy we know that from other areas within the within the scriptures that these are events that occur at these milestones what I really so what I'm really sh want to focus on here in this I'm just mentioning it to you so that we know where they are this is where the temple you remember Daniel said that the the city and the streets will be built even in troublous times this is during troubles troubled times trumpets well, these the trump the, tr the the first four trumpets are disastrous events for the for what's happening on the earth it's like serious stuff a third of the a third of the uh, the grass a third of the trees a third of the water turns to blood there's a whole lot of turmoil happening but in that time in jerusalem they're busy building the temple under the supernatural protection of the lord having arrived on mount sinai so unto and when the lord arrives he arrives after seven years or at this at the sixth seal so we've got the seven and then he's and then we've got the six and two where, where seven and six is 13 so at the 13th year we've got this cutoff event which is also um, connected to the two witnesses so this section here is two and a half years of war so we have three and a half years of building the temple then two and a half years of war with satan so that's a total of six years and then it's clean year uh, after the the resurrection of the two witnesses is clean up year 14th year the lord returns Okay, so there's a lot of information in the in this chart, and there's a lot of things that we can go into detail on the, uh, with concerning this event. But uh, the focus of this is to really just show you how Daniel 70 weeks does give us a um, end of uh, time prophecy, so that we can understand that the end times is a 15-year cycle of what we typically talk about 14 years. Okay, of tribulation, and then the final year is the is the jubilee, the restoration of the land. But the total is a 15-year cycle. Daniel is giving us a 15-year cycle after the 70. We've come to the end of the 70, and we can expect this 15 years to happen, of which one is a jubilee, and the 14 is tribulation. So, the church was correct in that Daniel gives us an end-time understanding. But they've just interpreted completely incorrectly. They've taken off a week at the end of the, the, the 69 and moved it out by 2,000 years and called it a seven-year tri tribulation. So that is completely wrong. 
the whole of the prophecy is related to the end time understanding. And when you read the whole of the prophecy in terms of 70 Shabuah or 70 years, and you read the text in terms of 7 and 6 and 2, which is multiple 6, and the multiple in this instance is 1, so it's seven and uh, uh, seven sh seven feast a week, so seven shabua and six feast a week, six sh six shabua and two feast a weeks, or or two shabua, giving us a total of fifteen for all of these events to happen until the Messiah is, and then we will see the end of the, the those those events that are that that uh, uh, those those six things that were uh, that were to be achieved in this time. Then we'll see the full, the, the full fulfillment, the finishing of the transgression, because there's more trans transgression to come, that's for sure. There's more sins to come, and then we'll make an end to the sins by that time. Make the, make, uh, to make reconciliation for lawlessness, there's still plenty of lawlessness to come. And to bring in everlasting righteousness, we still don't have everlasting righteousness at this point in time. And to seal up the vision, there's still many uh, visions and prophecies still be, to be fulfilled. And and the uh, and the final anointing of the Most Holy. So, as as Lord and King of the Millennial, and and all things having been restored to Him. So that when we see the completion of these seventy and this seven six and two, then all of these things will have been achieved. Okay, there's the the street built again during troublous times during the 7, 6, and 2. I think I pretty much covered what I wanted to, what I wanted to cover in terms of this, uh, this prophecy. Or just one last thing. We see that this was, again, this is, the, this is the prophecy in terms of the is. We are still in the is. And it becomes the is to come at the moment that the escape of the bride happens at the beginning, just before the, the in fact, we believe it'll be 50 days before the beginning of tribulation. Is, and then we change over f at that point in time. It goes from is to is to come. So that's, so everything we're living in now up until the, the bride is taken is the is. And from the moment that the bride is taken, that first group, that 10% of the church, then it becomes is to come with the, with the beginning part of Revelations, the seven seals, followed by the seven trumpets, and then of course ending with the bowls that are poured out because of of, of um, abominations, and uh, you pour out that which uh, on 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 the desolate. Uh, just going back to Daniel's Daniel's um, prophecy, he pr pr uh, prophesies of that uh, that pouring out. Right at the end. Just gonna have a look at that. Okay, so the, so just a recap on this. So towards the latter part of the six and two, shall Messiah be cut off? This is a blood covenant cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince. This is now the people of of the prince. Yeah, is this is Satan, and his people that they'll come and destroy during that two and a half year war. They will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh, destroyed because Satan will sit in it as, as uh, in the temple as God but it, by the end of it I do believe it will be completely flattened in any case and the end of thereof will be uh, with the flood we saw that there was uh, there is a, a mention of a flood in, in uh, Revelation chapter 12 and unto the end of the war which is the two and a half war, years war of sat with Satan between Satan and the, and the saints the two witnesses there will be desolation or desolation are, de are determined so end of the war, and then here we see that uh, for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, or the the full end, or the annihilation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The pouring out of the uh, by that stage, Jerusalem will be the equivalent of Sodom. Okay, spiritual Sodom. It's, it will have been taken over by Satan and become spiritually spiritual Sodom until it's been cleaned up. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Um, I hope that this is a blessing to you, the between the two videos, that you'll be able to look at uh, Daniel's 70 weeks with a whole new pair of eyes and understand that uh, there is a, a correct and true interpretation of Daniel. If you have certain things available to you, it's, it becomes understandable. If you have the biblical chronology, 
uh, which I again re recommend all Christians should have a clear understanding of a biblical chronology. Because without it, uh, we become unstuck, particularly with regards to Daniel 70 weeks. And anyway, with that, I'm going to sign out. Bless you. Amen.